Welcome to the Dale Sabor A Tu Salute podcast by Tadine. I am your host, Chef Carla Contreras. Join me as we steep in the world of Tadine with interviews from fellow creatives, foodies, and entrepreneurs from our comunidad. Danielle, welcome to the podcast. Can you tell us who you are and how you serve your community? Carla, thank you so much to you and the Tadine team for having me here. I'm Danielle Alvarez. I am the founder and CEO of The Bonita Project, a Latina-owned PR and marketing agency based out of New York City. Danielle, before we get into the podcast, we want to talk about tea. What's in your tasa? What was your last studying tea? So I brewed a lemon ginger tea blend. I'm trying it out. I'm not going to lie. This is my first time having a tadine tea, but I saved it just for the occasion. I normally, um, in the mornings, I'll drink a cafecito. I'm a coffee girl addicted to, I have to have my coffee, like, especially now because it's so hot. I can't have hot coffee. I'll have like a cold brew with like a splash of oat milk. But my tea time is normally like in the evenings, I would say like like after a heavy meal or just like, I don't know if that's like something that was like engraved in me and like as a, as a younger kid, like drinking tea at home with my mom, like tea was always seen as a, like the soothing factor to take after, after a big meal. I love that. And I love that you brought it into your family history, that it's part of that. Mm-hmm. Tadine is rooted in wellness. And I'm curious about how wellness plays a role in your business and in your life And also, what is your connection to Tadine? Absolutely. So wellness, I, you know, it's funny because I work in a very chaotic industry. So when you mention the word wellness, I'm not going to flaunt and and act like I I am practicing wellness each day. I do my best in trying to implement wellness each day into, into my routine, but from Monday through Friday, I will say it's a little hard <laughs> to do so. You know, I try to take my my social media breaks. I try to implement some workout routines here and there, especially in the mornings if I can squeeze it in. If not, you know, there goes my day. I have to go straight to work. But on the weekends, though, I will say I've done a great job of like really disconnecting from work. I I I hate to say this, and I don't say this as a good thing. It's like I'm a little bit of a workaholic sometimes because I have a business, right? I run a business. If something doesn't get done, it falls on me. No one else. Yes, I have a team, but it's a small team. At the end of the day, I'm the one that makes the final say in everything. If I want something to go a certain way, I have to make that call. So I do have a lot on my shoulders a a lot of the time. So yeah, during the week, it it can get very nutty depending on the season too. Right now, technically July is a little bit of a slow month for me. So it's not as cuckoo as it normally is. Come September, it will. But yeah, I mean, in the, on the weekends, like once Friday kicks in, like after five o'clock, I shut, I shut the computer and I leave it in the office. I'm like, that's it. I'm not touching this thing. I don't want to touch it. Yeah. I'll be on my phone, but not even then, like really on even Saturdays and Sundays, like I used to be an avid social poster. Like I was always posting social media. I mean, I'm in that world, right? I'm in that industry. I'm always posting. I used to always be posting and having to like share my day-to-day life. I don't do that anymore. I kind of stopped from the business side. Yeah. You'll see me active on my business page and whatnot, but on my personal page, like I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a quiet person now. Like I'll post funny things here and there, but it's not a part of me because that, I mean, at least for me, it was consuming me so much. So for me, it's like taking a break from technology. I think that's a very big, important one for me. And in terms of um, my connection to Tadeen, I mean, speaking of technology, right? Like I got an email from the team, surprisingly enough, asking me if I can connect with the team, get on a podcast interview. And little did I know that Tadeen has so much history within the Latino community that it's Latina owned. So that very much intrigued me to learn more and connect with the team. And here I am now sitting, sharing a podcast interview with you. And we're so grateful to have you. <laughs> I'm curious about, because you run, I mean, you're, you're a beauty publicist, so you run this agency, but I'm curious about your personal makeup and hair routine. <laughs> I'm really curious about this. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. I mean, if there's one thing that I learned about being in this industry since I started, like you have to play the part, you have to play the part. If you're going to be representing beauty brands at least try to be a beauty girl <laughs> because you'd be surprised. I'm like, I mean, and I do, I, I've always loved makeup since I was a child. Like, I'm not going to lie. Yo, like in Spanish, like 
I was un poco una agrandada, is what they used to say, like Daniela. Like I was playing with makeup very early that sometimes like my dad would even be like, my old school dad be like, why is she painting her nails so early? She's too young still. But my mom let me play with it. Like my mom let me play with nail polish. With makeup, I mean, I really didn't start experimenting with makeup until like my early, well, I would say teens. Like once I was in high school. Like I think middle school was like the definitely the cat eye or the the black eyeliner. I needed to have my black eyeliner. Like that was engraved in me. Like I needed, I, I felt naked if I didn't have a winged cat eye to go to school. But then slowly come like, I want to say junior and senior year, that's when I really started playing with like foundation. And then, you know, early college, even the bronzer came into play. And then I mean, now that I started working in the industry, I mean, contouring itself was not a topic of discussion when it came to makeup up until Kim Kardashian really put it out there, right? I have to give it to her. I know a lot of people are not always a fan of Kim and giving her credit, but the contour conversation did not come into play until she really, really put it on the map. And then all of us started contouring. Now that's like part of my makeup routine. Like I have to put not so heavy contouring. I mean, like the era of if you are a beauty girly and if you were consuming the beauty tutorials in like 2016, 2017, there was like the heavy contouring with like, you know, outlining your face with the bronzer, the concealer. Yeah, I don't do all of that. I have tried with it. I have played with it, but I don't do that. I just do very light contouring. I can walk out of the house without concealer. Like a concealer definitely like lifts my eyes and like just wakes me up. So color corrector and concealer is a must. And you know what also also is something that I also started really doing a really adding to my routine is doing my eyebrows. Just dressing up your eyebrows a little bit and dressing them, just brushing them up a little bit that's such a huge difference to your face I have to say so even for now like this is like my no makeup makeup look because that's also now like a trend I'm like learning with the girls as I go because I have to I have to be on top of the trends but yeah right now I I used to be a heavy heavy makeup girly like with the eyeshadows and like the layers of shadow now I've kind of toned it down a bit also I guess because I'm also aging a little bit in terms of like I'm getting older I'm trying to be more like aware of like okay should I still be wearing glitter eyeshadow like I used to I mean listen if you want to wear glitter eyeshadow and rock it do whatever you want but at least for me as like I don't know I'm in my mid-30s now so I'm just you know trying to also update my makeup routine it can't be the same as I was when I was 19 or 20 <laughs> like let's be real so um that has transitioned and what else my hair I mean my hair I've had quite a journey with my hair I hate love relationship with my hair just because growing up in I grew up in South Florida and even till this day I don't see many girls rocking curly hair like that in South Florida and Miami like a lot of the girls like it's you have your your flat iron and it's also because of the humidity right the humidity in South Florida is just gross like it's really gross so you don't really want to have to walk outside with big hair I get it so like the the trend there and like the, the look there is always to have straight hair straight wavy hair like maybe beach waves but like your hair is always like tamed at least indoors right because once you walk outside that's it the blowout that you did is gonna go it's gonna go bad so yeah so I've always dealt with big hair this big hair has been a part of me since I was a kid and back then like in the in the 90s and in the early 2000s there wasn't really any hair products servicing my hair texture and for me, so I was normally shopping in the Black Beauty brand aisles. Like I was shopping products that were technically catered for Black black hair, like Black textured hair. I didn't know any better. Neither did my mom. Mind you, my mom doesn't have this hair. My mom has very thick, straight hair. She got it more from the indigenous side. So she has that thick hair. Whereas I, I got a mix of more of my dad's side. So even my mom was like learning as she went with my hair. She didn't know how to style me. She didn't know how to do a rock a ponytail. Like it was a, it was, it was a, that's when, when I say like when I was a teenager, I was a fixated to that flat iron. So I damaged my hair a lot. Like my hair, teenager, college, straight to the iron, flat iron, flat iron, like getting it straight. And that to me, that was like, I feel more beautiful when I have my hair straight. Right. And maybe at the end, I'll get the curling iron and curl my little tips and like do that. But that was it. Like that was my look. So if you even look, if you, if for those nosy folks and like, or someone that wants to dig deep into my Instagram, like pre 2018, I, you would only see me sporting a, a straight blowout. And then once I started my career and working in the industry, that continued. And then when I could, I was going to Dry Bar, which is a very well known um, hair like blowout salon and across 
different states now, but it started in New York City. And I was visiting it once a week to get my fresh blowout, spending like almost $60, like once a week to get a fresh blowout. And it wasn't until 2018 that I actually launched my business. And then I met this woman named Ona Diaz-Santin, who happens to now be my client. So I'm going to give her a shout out. But she really changed my life because she's a hairdresser based out of New Jersey. She has a salon and she's known for curly haircuts. I mean, she does it all. She's a colorist. She's a hairstylist. She's a, she, she, she cuts hair. And, but she's definitely built fame within the curly hair community. And I sat in her chair and she basically changed my life. She was like, the reason why you don't like your curls is because you neglect your curls. You're only straight straightening your hair each time. Like you have to let your hair breathe, <laughs> take a pause. Let me cut your hair. But you have to promise me that for the next six months, you're not going to straighten your hair. We're going to take a pause from that and let me help bring your curls back to life. And I said, okay, do you know how hard that was so hard for me to do? Because I, I, I kid you not, like, I, I did I didn't feel great. Like I didn't feel great. I didn't feel comfortable. So that was a whole journey in and of itself. Mind you, that was also at the same time that I was launching my business. So it also helped me save money too, because I was like, who am I gonna be spending sixty dollars a week at the hair salon when I need to be saving it because I don't even have enough clients yet? <laughs> like I can't be going all out. So I took that curly hair journey and then ended up being a year that I didn't straighten my hair. I don't think I straightened my hair until like a year later. And then Ever since I met Ona, I've I've been playful. I cut my hair. I've chopped my hair really short, which I never thought I would do. That was like pre-pandemic, like right before the pandemic hit. And then the growing back phase was a little bit hard for me to get, get used to. And I said, you know what? No, I'm not doing a hair chop like that. Lesson learned. But now my haircut is, I told her a couple of months ago, I was like, you know what? Give me flash dance give me 80s I want this like 80s look like that's the look I want I want it and she's like let's make it happen like you know hairstyle you give if you tell a hairstylist like hey listen this is my vision they get excited you know like they do love to chop 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 wherever they can like let's get on let's get out of your comfort zone type of thing so we did that chop and she gave me bangs she gave me layers so this is like what I like to call the Danny flash dance look and here we are so this is the current look that I'm rocking now <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> it's gorgeous. And if people aren't seeing this because they're listening on Apple, you know, iTunes or Spotify, you can see this in the Thidine D's feed and see her hair. And it's just <laughs> fabulous. So I'm excited to hear the journey and the story. Can we talk about your business? I would love to know yeah. how your business started with a conversation with your mother how did the name come to be? Tell us all about that. Yeah. So the Bonita Project, before me deciding to launch it, I was working at a very reputable PR agency for about almost eight years. Right out of college, I worked there. It really opened the doors for me to connect with big brands. And it. And without me knowing this, I was slowly building my influencer network, right? I was building because in the 2012s, 13s, this like Latina influencer world really wasn't existent yet. It didn't exist. It really wasn't because also we're talking about an era where press was definitely prioritized. Like the magazine, all the full magazines were still printing. You had like all the Latina magazines still out there. But influencer, like that term influencer was still very loosely shared. <laughs> but then come 2016, like around that time, I think it's really when it went in full, in full bloom. As I approached like 2018, I just felt like I, my purpose wasn't being fulfilled anymore. I wanted to, I, I definitely tried to like look into other jobs. Where can I apply else? Like I can go, you know, try something new and nothing really was calling my name. And then I decided to say, you know what, maybe let me try consulting and see how that goes. I'll just consult until I find the next big gig because nothing was calling my name. And a few people, I mean, definitely if you're going to launch your own business, like it's important to have your inner circle like rooting for you and also supporting you with that decision and that's where my mom came into play because my mom I mean my mom has been part of my journey <laughs> my whole life <laughs> and um, she's been my biggest cheerleader if there's someone that's been rooting for me since day one it's mom like when I moved to New York from Florida she was like do it do it Daniela do it si no te gusta come back you can always come back to Miami Miami will always be home so my my heart was always set on on New York 
And then when I wanted to leave, you know, my full time, my mom was like, Danielle, you know what? You have nothing to lose. Danielle. you have built so much. You have so much experience. You have your connections now. Spread your wings elsewhere. And I'll never forget. She was like, test it out. And if you don't like it, you can always go back to a full time job. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay, maybe the consulting business doesn't doesn't succeed. It doesn't, you know, doesn't happen for all. And it's okay. At least you tried it. You know, te quedas con la duda. Like, you don't have that doubt. And like, oh, man, what would have happened if I actually would have done this? And then regarding it later on. So I took a really, really, what I like to say, cocky move because I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this and see how it goes. With, I didn't have much saved. I'm going to be honest with you. I was asking around like other entrepreneurs, like how much should I save up? How much money should I have on the side? And they were like, oh, you should have like a year's worth of a salary. I'm like, yeah, that's not the reality. I don't have that kind of money. So yeah, so I I, I did that 2018. Now, the name Bonita, the Bonita Project, I like to share this story because it's 100% true. It was inspired by a song that was trending in the summer of 2017. If you guys are familiar with, of course, J Balvin, you know, who doesn't know J Balvin? J Balvin, I mean, this was during his prime. J Balvin had come out with a song the summer before that it was called Bonita. And I was obsessed with it. Like I was like, it was like on repeat, on repeat. And when it was time for me to like brainstorm, like, okay, what is this consulting business going to be called? A lot of the times people name the consulting business after themselves, right? Like their name and that's it. Like file an LLC or file a business name under their full name. But I didn't want that. I knew that I wanted something that sounded maybe a little bit more attractive. Maybe that can also be a Spanish word, but can also resonate with everybody. Like everyone's going to know what that means. And that's when I, it hit me like Bonita, like, and also I work in the beauty industry. Like, why would I not name this Bonita? But then it was like, well, okay, Bonita with what? So originally I wanted to call it Proyecto Bonita, Spanish. But then I had my little text, like my little text, my group chats, my little, what I call my focus groups, right? Like with different groups of friends and asking them like, okay, what are your thoughts on this? this, this? And they're like, Danny, no not Spanish, because you're going to alienate so many other people. Like at the end of the day, a lot of people don't know what Proyecto is. It's like, it's, it's maybe, maybe too Spanish, like make it Spanglish. So then that's where the Bonita project came into play. And then I filed the, I filed for the LLC in January of 2018. And then shortly, like, I would say like what, three, four weeks later, I found out it got approved. And then after that, it was like, ah, okay, check mark one done, like check. The first box to check off, done. Now let's move on to the next big step, quitting my job. And then that's how it led to be. Then March of 2018, I started with Bonita full time and little by little building my clientele. And when I first started, one of my very first clients actually, which I do, I do want to give a shout out here is Farsali. Farsali is a beauty brand and that really went big in the era of also like I was mentioning 2016 2017 and it it was known as the brand behind the unicorn tears like it really made a trend I don't know if you follow when like all the youtubers started like dropping products down their faces like that brand was really behind that technique and how that came to life like the droppers and like the use the use of like these these serums and anywho, fast forward to 2018, I connected with that brand and they needed a publicist. They had, had they, they were growing so fast and they needed someone. So I pitched myself and I know they had entertained other people, but they gave me the business. And I'll always for, remember the owner is actually a, a male. His name is Sal, Sal Ali. And he mentioned when he, when he chose me, when he reached out to me, he was like, you know, when I spoke with you, you sound very passionate about what you do. I know this is your first time like working on your own, but I can tell you're going to put a lot of heart and soul into my project. And that's, I want someone that's going to like, really like treat this client, like treat this brand as if it's its own, as if, and then that to me meant the world. I'm like, don't worry, Sal, I got you. Like, I will do, I will do my best. We will kill it. Like, and then, to, and then that kind of, again, little by little opened the doors for me to get new and, and more clients. And after, after Farsali, I started dabbling more with like Latina owned beauty brands because that also had a big momentum between 2018, 2019, and even 2020. I um, mean, it's still being, I mean, it's still growing like the lineup of Latina owned beauty brands. But for me to be a part of that conversation is so important to me because as a Latina owned agency, like, yes, it's great to work with like big brands and whatnot, big budgets, but in the end to, to help 
the underdog, like a, a brand that's like really about the community that re- it's ma- that's founded by one of us, like it means a lot for me to support them. So, so one of our other clients after like in my beginning, in my early journey was Alamar Cosmetics. And Alamar Cosmetics is a brand founded by Gabby Trujillo, a Cuban American based out of Miami, Florida. And she's done incredible for herself. I mean, she's done amazing. Her brand also blew up. And yeah, over the years, I started working and consulting for these indie Latina owned beauty brands, black owned beauty brands. And then fast forward to 2022 is when the big brands started knocking on the door. (laughs) And we got a knock, knock by Urban Decay Cosmetics. And we started out with one project. And now that has turned into a beautiful partnership that we're continuing till this day. So I'm happy to say that I'm working with them now still. They've been an incredible brand to like really collaborate with and get creative with. And they've allowed us to do some really, really, really cool, I have to say. Danielle, can you tell us about the Bonita Influencer Network and who should apply? So our Bonita Influencer Network was started as a way for us to create space for underrepresented creators, like creators that are not getting the right visibility. And we did a call to action a year and a half ago for creators to submit an application and submit their info. So really what we're looking for is BIPOC creators, LGBTQIA plus creatives as well, that may not have management yet, that they are not, you know, but they're actively posting beauty content. Right now, for for instance, we're very much prioritizing our Bonita Beauty Network. So we're looking for creators that are actively posting content, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's on Instagram. And it doesn't necessarily need to mean that you have a gazillion followers. You can maybe even have 5,000 followers. You can have 3,000 followers. But the fact that you're posting content actively and you're looking to grow, I'm all about supporting the micro creators because that's important for me. I see a lot of growth in that because from here in five years, you never know where that creator is going to end up. They're going to end up, you know, blowing up. So we really want to add that kind of faith into these up and coming creators a lot of them are young a lot of them are out of high school some of them are even out of college that are you know really dedicating themselves to creating content and it doesn't necessarily need to be just makeup content I have to say it can be like a mix of like beauty wellness wellness like you mentioned wellness we also are always looking into wellness creators as well and you don't have to be based out of New York you can be based out of any other place in the in the state I mean, in the country, and as long as, yeah, it's within the US. And then how this network functions is that every, I would say every two months, we review new applications, and then we submit a certain number of creators into our network. Now, there's no monthly fee attached to this, you're not paying to be a part of this. It's just basically a database that you join. And whenever we have events, Whenever we have influencer campaigns that we're working on that we need to tap into creators, they're basically the first ones to know, or we just reach out to them like, hey, we're working on this campaign that requires X, Y, and Z. Would you be interested in participating in it? If so, what's your fee for that? Like things of that nature, basically creating opportunities for them. And then also with that, we're also, we launched this initiative called Bonita Amplifies. And what is Bonita Amplifies? It's an initiative on behalf of our agency that includes Um, a series of networking mixers and grants. So we have ourselves issued our own grants for BIPOC creators throughout the year. We do it three times a year. We do it for Black History Month. We do it for Pride Month. And then we do it also for Latinx Heritage Month. And now with the networking mixers, it's an experience. We create an event experience so that these creators can come in and mingle and connect with our industry Rolodex. So we have, we invite people from different brands. I mean, yes, to our beauty context, but also contacts from other places, even press, they come to these networking mixers to the whole purpose is to connect and meet with creators and leave with a new connection, which will then hopefully lead to an, to an opportunity. Amazing. Can you tell us how we can find you, how we can support you in your business? Yes, you can definitely find us on both Instagram and TikTok at The Bonita Project. Um, Our website, we also have it at thebonitaproject.com. You can find more info on our Bonita Network there. So feel free to apply and I'll catch you guys on social. Thank you so much for this, Carla. Really, I truly enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, Danielle. Gracias. Thank you so much for steeping in the world of Tadeen. I am your host, Chef Carla Contreras. You can find Tadeen at Tadeen Tees on Instagram and more information in the show notes. If you're on iTunes or Spotify, please leave us a review. Adios.